Good evening. This is Street Talk, and I'm Father Russ Carmichael. And again, as always, thank you for letting me in your home. Uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, we really appreciate all the advocates all over the state that has helped us. Uh, and with me, of course, tonight, I have Dominic Cotton, my co-host, is sitting across from me, and I have a guest that I haven't seen probably in five or six years, but I, I, I am in touch with her on Facebook, and she's an author, journalist, and one of my favorite people, Susan Campbell. Hey, God you bless doing? you. And, uh, you forgot activists. You know, uh, active, 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 activist. Active, 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 <laughs> activist, right? Uh, okay. Uh, God, I, 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 I met... I, I met Susan six, seven years ago, something like that. We had somebody was doing a documentary on me, famous me and the homeless <laughs> situation. And uh, you were... Uh, you Trying were, to get in on it. Uh, no, no you, were, you, were, you were with the paper. You were with yeah, you, the current. The current uh, I guess full time then at, yep. at, the, at that particular time. And, and then I know they interviewed you for the document, uh, the, the, the document that is around someplace on me and stuff like that, but you know, we were talking about homeless. Tonight, I, I, I really want to ask how you you have two books out, uh, okay? One, one is um, Dating Jesus, mm -hmm. okay? And the other is, uh, what is the other? Tempest Tossed, and don't worry, Temp nobody Temp remembers it. Temp <laughs> Tempest Tossed? Tempest Tossed. Tempest Tossed, yeah. okay. I'm sorry, I haven't read it. There's no test. No, Many no people test. have not read that book, and they're okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not, their lives are fine. That's all. You, you do a tremendous amount of writing. I do. A lot of people uh, know who you are throughout Connecticut and stuff like that. Of course, you like to hide and probably don't want to say all the accolades you should have. But how, how did you get into journalism? And yeah. I guess that's what I. Sure. Um, I was nine turning ten, and I saw a movie with Clark Gable and Doris Day called um, Teacher's Pet. Nobody's seen this movie. It came out in like 61. And I was a kid, but I remember, and I was watching it as a rerun at home, and I was sitting cross-legged in the living room floor watching it on the rabbit ear TV, and it struck me that every female journalist, Clark Gable was an old-time newspaper editor, bit the heads mm -hmm. off chickens, hated everybody. For some reason, he ends up taking a journalism class from Doris Day, you know, America's Virgin. I, made no sense to me, and I'm probably getting it wrong. I've not gone back to see it. Um, but I was watching this movie, and I thought every female journalist I ever saw dressed great, talked tough, and didn't take crap off of anyone. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> career. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And I had no more uh, uh, of a background. I'd never seen a female journalist except on television. I didn't want to go on television, but I asked for a typewriter for my next birthday because I knew they typed, and my mother gave me her old Smith Corona, and the T was stuck. She'd used it for her one semester at Joplin Business School in Missouri. So I had my typewriter, I was ready to go. I've never looked back. <laughs> and, 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 that, and that was it. That was huh? it. It was <laughs> like, oh boy, I get to type. <laughs> that, now, was the Comet your first? Uh, no, no, God, no, 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 no. no. Um, how, was, how long were you with the Comet? You, you 105 were... years. <laughs> 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 but I got notches on my belt for the editors I killed and buried in the parking lot. I was there 26 years. 26, 26 years. Plus. Okay. Is that right? I don't do math. So, that's something. Very, okay. Long time. But your works, you, you did other stuff before that? Yeah, that wasn't that? my first rodeo. That wasn't the no. first rodeo. Joplin okay. Globe, writing obituaries. That was great. Uh huh. Wichita Eagle Beacon, and then the, uh, the then, current. Okay. Yeah. And you're the author, as I said, mm -hmm. two books. Yep. Okay. Uh, Dating Jesus. Yeah. Okay. How'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up Christian fundamentalist in the Missouri Ozarks, which makes you a very peculiar person. And I had long had um, issues with that theology. It's very exclusive. The women are to keep silent. We're the only ones going to heaven. And that, I just would look at my youth group and think, I don't want to go to heaven with these people. No offense, <laughs> Steve and Cindy Bean, you're fabulous people. But I didn't want to marry one of them. I just 
I, want, I thought the world was bigger than that, and I couldn't imagine that God supported that kind of theology. So I would argue in Sunday school pretty much from age eight on. And then I got older and quit the church and ended up at the Hartford Seminary. And I was in a writer's group, and I wrote an essay about being baptized. And in this particular fundamentalist church, you had to be immersed all the way under, all the way buried under. with Jesus. There. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I know. But when I was being baptized, I had a little air bubble in my baptismal gown, oh, okay. so it didn't go underwater. And as a fundamentalist, you're thinking, oh, crap, this doesn't count. I'm not buried. <laughs> you know? I'm not buried. So I, yeah, so I wrote this essay. i do it again. Yeah, well, I did <laughs> because you know, my, it was like a little pregnancy there, yeah. and God forbid that would have happened. But so I wrote this essay, and you know, I'm back here at the time, and I read it in the writer's group I was in, which included Wally Lamb. If you, oh, oh my wow. God. He would... He would come and read something and be like, yeah, I don't want to read this time. <laughs> and he was so supportive and wonderful. But the other people in the group, including Wally, said, oh, you should write more on that. So it's like, all right. So I wrote the book. <laughs> so you ended up writing the book. Jesus. I yeah. haven't read the book. Many people haven't yeah, read that know, one either. I, I, I got the book. Okay. I have it. I know I have it, but I haven't, re I it's haven't our, read it. There will be so no you, test on that either. Uh, but, uh, well, it sounds like now I have to be, be uh, uh, okay. It's kind well, of snotty. Your, well, you, you, you know, the journey, fun. the spiritual journey is interesting. And, it's and bumpy. It's, and it's bumpy, yeah. yeah. Okay, cause that, and, 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 you know, I went from a Roman Catholic left. I went to, I studied theology as an atheist, and then I, then I came back through uh, as a Methodist. And got got ordained as a Methodist. Then, then I I left the Methodists because I got angry with them, and, and then became <laughs> became uh, uh, Pentecostal. Are you a holy and, roller? Oh yeah, I, got, I didn't know I, that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I speak in tongues and everything. That is so cool. My <laughs> then, grandparents were. I used to love going to their church. Oh yeah, way I, more I, interesting. I, well, and then I left them because they wouldn't. Well, they wouldn't take the homeless on the church grounds. So you oh, know me, wow. you, you know, and they wouldn't deal with certain prisoners. Although they loved me because I was an ex-convict at the time. But you were all cleaned and, but, up. But I was all cleaned up, right? So, so I, what verse did they quote to keep the homeless uh, and I, the... I, I don't know. That's a different Bible. Okay. And, and then, I, uh, uh, then I did my thing. I did a long thing for a while. And then I ended up in the monastery at uh, St. David, Arizona. And... And, and, and the Romans said, well, you, you never really left the Romans. You're still a Roman, whether you like it or not. So, so I ended up several years with them. But what a, it, it's, it, I, the spiritual journey for people is, uh, you, you know, if you're real. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a real thing that I, don't, I think people, people miss. It isn't about church, and it isn't mm -hmm. about uh, things. So I, gotta, I guess i got to read that. Nah. Do you get a spiritual journey story? Do we get to hear yours? Mine, uh, mine's probably not as complicated as you do. Good <laughs> for you. you. That's I cool. think my, my family, uh, we, we all believe that we are hedonists. So. Oh, that <laughs> clears <laughs> the decks. All right. So, <laughs> I never really went to church. Uh, so you're so going I, to hell is what you're uh, saying. Uh, well, all your I'm friends go will there, be there. I'm okay. Gonna, now, I, 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 I gave my no. absolution, so he's all right. So you're, you're good. I got him coming. <laughs> uh, no, I think I've always not organized religion. Yeah. Um, more, more along the spiritual path of things. Um, and you're the gr largest growing group of people yeah. in the I country. Mean, I've been, I the mean, nuns, I've been working, so. helping people since Absolutely. I've been, I don't know, like 13, 14 years old. So in one capacity or another, it's you're just good. that's where my... You know, Colin was to help people. I mean, we, 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 we found each other. It's not like you find you find Father Russ. It's like he finds you, and then he latches on. <laughs> Be good at what you do, and uh, you know, I, it, we have a lot of spiritual discussions. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I do believe in you know the the the, the, the spirit. I'm mm -hmm. not. Uh, I, I, I do go to Catholic church every every Sunday. It's every Sunday I, he goes to church because I I take a yeah, client uh, yeah. that I, that I that you know enjoys the church. So That's I've cool. gotten I've gotten to understand a lot more about the Bible from that. Um, I know uh, I enjoy you know very charismatic people that don't talk dogmatically. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. uh, about it. I mean, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, as I was saying before, our, our good priest down in, in Bridgeport decided to go Breaking Bad and <laughs> start, That's a fascinating got, story, got, got isn't it? Got <laughs> and uh, Oops. Was, was selling crystal meth from California, got busted, and he was he was laundering his money. And a porn through, shop. In a pawn shop. So he a was, pawn shop? Yeah. Why no, did no, I no, think no, it was not, porn? No, porn. That's no, okay. Yeah, it was. It was, it was it, uh, that, that's right. So he that's went off. That's a detail you want to remember. Yeah, he, he went off. Wow. He went off the beaten path. A little. Yeah. <laughs> and, you uh, know that story. I do. I remember yeah, reading it in the current, the going, "Holy cow, right. this is <laughs> awesome!" Oh but you know Not what? Awesome, but. I, I'll give. I'll give this much to him. When he would go up there and he would give a homily, he had the most interesting homilies that I have ever heard out of anybody. Hmm. He was worldly. He'd been to the show. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> no, he did. traveled around quite a bit. <laughs> He'd been places. He'd been there. Been there, been there done there. that. Yeah. Maybe that makes a homily oh, better. God, he's going, Jesus so, is going to get guess, you out. Apparently, wow. um, that was amazing. Who, who was it? Which, which one went down to, to New York from, from Bridgeport? Oh. Uh, he used to be his secretary, <laughs> and he didn't bring him with him. So everybody was wondering, wondering why, why. Yeah. what was kind of like off in this whole thing, because usually if, you know, yeah. you're working as somebody's secretary, you're, you're handling everything, they go down to New York and, you know, they become an archbishop, you go with them. Yeah. Nope. Get them, out, get them back in Bridgeport. See you later, right? Yeah. Lord. The other thing, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I met you over the homeless mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, that was years ago when we were doing this stuff and document. And then uh, you just went crazy on me. <laughs> and, yeah, and, that's and a good accurate. Is history. that is that is that pretty good? Yeah, I'd always written about symptoms of poverty at the right. current. Nothing else really interested me, and I I won't say I did a good job at it, but I always kept coming back to that. And I think that was based for all the things I didn't like about the church I grew up in. What I really liked was the idea that you're, you're put here to serve and things should be fair. And even again, the theology is so counter to what I believe except for that piece, which was we would knock doors for Jesus, but we would take grocery bags of food because the gospel tastes better when it's wrapped in a peanut butter sandwich. So if someone's hungry, they can't hear you. That's right. So we would take, I mean, these people weren't any better off than we were, but we would collect clothes. And that was very much a part of the ministry, although we didn't call it that. It was just, of course, you're going to take your neighbor some food. They could be hurting. So that stuck with me. And the idea that people were comfortable, like on a night like tonight, when it's going to be so bitter, bitter cold. Exactly. If you hang out at all with people who are, have been homeless, you do not tuck yourself into bed comfortably. No. It's not like I'm going to bring everybody home with no. me, but you cannot go to bed and right. think, ah, oh, you're thinking, oh man, I know Smiley's out there under a bridge in Hartford. Yeah. So that was from my church, right. you know, right. so I always right. kept coming back to that. I was occasionally encouraged to find a new topic. And I w would, and then come back to that. And now as a freelancer, what are you going to tell me? Find a new topic? I don't have to. <laughs> this is what I want to write about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 you, and you've been involved with the, uh, the program to provide uh, yeah. housing? I, I, was, I worked that? for about two and a half years for, uh, for Partnership for Strong Communities. Right. And I wasn't very good at the job they gave me, but I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So it was great. Um, and for a while, I was on the board of Connecticut Coalition in Homelessness, in homelessness and I learned right. a lot there, too. Yeah. I've left now so I can freelance with no ties uh -huh, at all, okay. but um, it's, it's been awesome. Connecticut is on the cusp in a lot of ways yeah. for doing some really great things. They, you, yeah, you, you, you do have to say in that area, they, they are doing a lot of things. Of course, when we started, in, when, when I started in 2003 in, in New London, I had, I had Six guys and a lady. They were the key people that were in the street, mm. and they only had a couple of months emergency shelter. Okay, of course now they have the shelter full time and everything else. Like, you know, and they got the uh, real, real good uh, breakfast program and feeding program and stuff like that. And London has really done uh, a, a lot. Uh, uh, 
philosophically, I, there was a point where I disagreed with them. And, uh, and what I, do you think about housing first? I, see, well, that was always the stuff, because I'm a yeah. BU guy. I started with BU in Boston in Rosie's place uh, in the 70s. Yeah. And that was always the study that we, if you give them a place, as they did in Utah, Okay. And they're Utah doing it here, too, yeah. That way, and now they're doing it here, right. Yeah. But Utah has led the way in that, and in nine years, they've done exactly what we said you should do way back when, in the 70s, out of Boston University. They were actually using the stuff. They're giving them the house, yeah. and they're doing the stuff, and then you interject the, the, you know, the services. Mm -hmm. And they almost have ended homelessness in Utah in, in less than nine years. Hopefully, we haven't done enough here about doing that, but there, there was the group that was always leading the way, and that was what I was about, and instead they built the shelter here, and I, I said, no, yeah, I'm not about building. Beds. I don't need more beds, not like no, that. Well, you know that as soon as you build an agency, <laughs> <laughs> you need the to beds build, fill up. Yeah, you yeah. need to fill the beds yeah. up. No, you, you, you that, and I tried to say no. That's not what you do. You have to provide them with the yeah, home. Yeah, but and when you them. were saying that, people are like, yeah, whatever, because there yeah. wasn't the political right. will to think financially beyond the morality of it. Financially, it makes perfect sense to house people because right. you're spending so much more having them out on the street. And long term, you're spending millions of dollars when we, you can get people housed, but significantly them. We less. We showed them that. We did the study. We they did the study in New York with the three guys. Yep. Okay, three people. They spent a million dollars a person in one year. Three on three people. We did the study here. I had one guy going back, going back and yeah. forth to the emergency, emergency room, yeah. Uncle Joe. That and I said, I, I went and I said, look, you need to, you need to give him a house. You need to find him a place. Are you crazy? Yeah, I mean, you can send him up at the Ritz. I and said, it'd be well, cheaper. and it's cheaper. Yeah. I said, you spent. He spent something like six hundred thousand dollars in a year. On, in a year. Wow. Okay, so we did a couple of those things, and they said, "Well, they like finally, uh, Father Emmett, when he was uh, alive, and myself uh, were able to find him a place, and we, and I think it was down in New Haven, mm -hmm. and because he was a veteran, that's right. We found where we. There's got always the, been money the, for the, veterans, the, the, the veterans, and that's great. That was, you um, know, there's a lot of families though that and, are out and there, he, and he was taken care of. In fact, most all the, almost all the individuals I started with, in 2003, four, and five, have uh, have have places and are secure. Still house. Yeah, yeah, but right now I'm sure that uh, at the shelter, uh, I'll bet you tonight there's 60, 65 people down there that, in New uh, London. In New London, because they have the they have the shelter rather than what we wanted to what what, yeah. what we wanted to do and we had housing here we had we we had we, and we still new london still has i'm in waterford now so i'm there but uh, new london still has houses on the tax rolls uh two and three families that they could actually put these people in well, that's what, that's what they did with the military one. They, mm -hmm. they, they had a whole yeah. bunch yeah, of state-owned properties. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the way to, well, well, yeah, that's, that's what you were you're involved with, right? was the ones was, that they yeah. did, were with uh, uh, leading the way in that. And they, yeah. they haven't done it here. It's New like London. in ways, although New London really has a great reputation. And, and Connecticut, the federal government has approved, I don't know how, the if you say, okay, we've ended chronic homelessness among veterans, you have to apply and prove that to the federal government, and then they mm -hmm. can say, officially, we have. Right. So officially, Connecticut has ended chronic homelessness among right, veterans, right. and they're on the cusp of being able to say they've ended homelessness among veterans, period. But yeah. that doesn't mean, you know, for people who are watching this, that does not mean it, yeah. nobody's homeless. Nobody's homeless. It no. means that, right, it means, there's a system in place, place that if someone veterans. becomes, right, for veterans. And, and we're talking veterans because the money's there for veterans. The money's there, but now they're yeah. starting to throw, I mean, Obama just announced how much money to go toward families who families are homeless. Families who are It homeless, takes money, right. but then in the long run, you save money. In the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it's really a seriously well, complicated entry. for anybody unless they have some sort of stability and know well, where they're going to be. Especially kids. Well, yeah. now, yeah. Well, we're talking, we're talking the second chance stuff here, yeah. okay? And we're trying to empty out the, 
y you know, the, the uh, uh, correctional facilities. And the problem with that is there is no infrastructure in place right now. To empty the, the to, mail, no, to bring no, Where are they going to go? They're going to be homeless. It's kind of like no what, they, job. Yeah. what they did nope. with mental health. Just when they closed down them out all, the, the all the large <laughs> hospitals <laughs> they, ex ex yeah. exactly. and, and gave them no place to go. Yeah. And that increased yeah. the homeless population, and we're right. still suffering for that. And that yeah. increased the jail population in turn. Yeah, right, because they got to go somewhere. But I was saying all this to say mm. that you're quite an advocate, and you wrote a lot about all this stuff, and you write, you continue to write about all this well, stuff. Well, what else am I going to write and, about? <laughs> well, I, well, I Fashion. mean, man, yeah, no, no, but it, what, what, uh, when we talk about advocacy, if we didn't have people like yourself that were out mm. there and didn't write about it and didn't get... You know, I know, nothing. but I always feel like I get credit for doing my job when it's people who are out there on the front lines who are really the advocates. I am reporting on that and telling people. So I serve a purpose in that I'm letting people know, hey, this is going. You know, this is happening in your state, and you may not know about that because you don't go to the websites that would tell you that. But um, Yeah, and I, and I look as it being in the trenches, if I don't have people like you doing it, nobody knows about what's going on. It's one hand and, clapping. Yeah, Maybe, and, but and, I mean, on and, the and, scale and, of human good. events, I'm telling stories. Yeah. It's all good, you know, yeah, it's, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Which gets people involved. And, I hope. And, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it does. I, I, well, I have to believe that uh, because uh, mm. I've been out here for 50 years, uh, especially in the justice stuff. We're still struggling with so much stuff. I mean, y y you know, we have more incarcerated in this country than any place else in and the world. And look at their race. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. and they're all poor. And they're, in, you know, and, and they're providing jobs for people who couldn't get jobs otherwise. You mean in the in industrial in, complex industrial that is complex, our complex, yeah. corrections? Yeah, in the prison yeah. industrial complex is, is, is such that if we, don't, uh, if we don't look at that, I mean, I don't know, you, you know, I don't know how you see that. I don't know how you, how do you view, you, you know, the difficulties of our communities where, where we are now. I mean, you do get a lot of the stories. You see mm -hmm. an overview of, of, uh, of what's happening in, yeah. in many areas. I do, and I don't think you can talk about homelessness and not talk about the prison system. I don't think you can talk about the prison system and not talk about the lack of jobs. And you can't talk about any of this without talking about affordable housing, which we are sucking canal water on in Connecticut. It's one of the most expensive housing markets in the country. So if people come out of prison, you know, say they serve their time, now they're out, now what? Yeah. That's, you know. To no job, no future, no hope. There's your know. equation for recidivism. Yeah. They're going to go back what, in. What are you going to go there? And people look at it as male, but as you know, because I know that you work very heavily with the women's thing, how, how tough is it for women? Say, same same thing with all, incredible with all the hard. incredible. Huh? And how many of those women are in there because they fought back? You know, they tried to defend themselves, so now they're in, not well, not Nyanic, but now they're in jail. Yeah, exactly. That doesn't seem fair, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not a good way to do things. You can't wa warehouse people, whether they're people who are homeless or people who've broken the law. You can't. You can't just put them over there and think that you've eliminated the issue because they have to come out at some point. And if we're too intellectually lazy to figure this out, then we get what we pay for. Well, yeah, we do. We do no corrections. We, we do no. Uh, we do no programming. We do not do anything where the individual, while they're there, can elevate themselves in a situation where they can survive when they come back out. My brother was in jail in Kansas and Missouri, and we're thinking, okay, well, he'll get in there and, you know, we'll send him books and he'll have some time. It, it was not that at all. It was a real eye-opener because, you know, I mean, you think someone's going to go in there and they're going to come out differently. Yes, they are. <laughs> but it's not necessarily the way you would like to see them no, come out. No, no, it's not. And it, I think it takes someone of extreme moral fortitude to come out a better person in prison, and if we're going to put people in that environment, we have to, as a culture, answer to why are we setting them up for further failure? Who is served by that? Well, I, 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 gave, you, I gave you a book tonight that my, uh, can my associate, 47 years 
in, in the Massachusetts prison system, went in when he was 17, has done every possible program that you can believe, educated himself, graduate of BU, uh, cum laude, uh, Boston University, done everything, and he ain't letting them out. And, and he's black, the individual. And the reason is they don't, they, they don't want to let out people who are going to make it. It ends their jobs. They, 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 they let out people. They Who, let out people they? who are going to fail. I mean the uh, industrial corporate corrections. Correction. I mean corrections themselves. Mm -hmm. They do not know how to evaluate people. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Parole, parole should be automatic. They should, have, they should do away with parole boards. I mean they should have an automatic system where you've done your time and, and you, you're better off. Uh, okay, because you will get more individuals out that'll stay out. By the, the way they do the system, it's they don't even know how to evaluate mm. somebody. See, if you get educated and you do all the right things, that means you you, be, you beat the system. You're so smart mm. that you're, you're going to go out and and, and uh, uh, do do the same thing. It, it's a it's a terrible system. It, mm -hmm. it really is our system. I know. I was I was listening to. Uh obviously uh, 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 the appropriations and, and they, were, they were doing the human services budget mm -hmm. which is just uh, getting wiped out um, and there were you know people from different groups that were out there and, and one of them that really kind of uh, hit me uh, was uh, uh, the fatherhood group and they were talking about how much um, they work you know, uh, with fathers, helping them to rejoin with their families and, you know, teaching them the skills of parent parenting and other things along those lines. And these are the people that are coming out of jail and they never connected with their father. And you, you look at the cycle that keeps going on and on and on. And they're talking about, you know, cutting off these programs, yeah. which you know, they, they're not spending a whole heck of a lot of money on them. They're not. But it's, it's, it's just a wise investment because, you know, the reason that you're not in there is because of your kids that's and exactly because right. of the connection yeah, well, that you it, have well, with that's them. Well, that's it. That's it. If I, mm -hmm. if I hadn't had children, uh, I'd, I'd probably be on death row. If I didn't have that connection with my kids, and then I was a single parent at the time. If I didn't have uh, th those those things, I I, I know. I, I mean, I I know my my life would have been totally different. I could be, you know, I was an organized crime guy. Uh, okay, I was an economic uh, person that was uh, was about and stuff like that. If I did not have the the uh, tie with my children first. You know, it wasn't religion. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. I never got galloping religion while I, I, I was an atheist. While I was my first bit when I went in, I did two. Uh, I did a total of seven years. I, I did four on the first. I thought one. you had an interesting spiritual journey. That's pretty good. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 That's you, good. You know, but but uh, but it was about the kids. It, it was about it was about it was about the kids and. Uh, and that, and that's what and that's what kept me out. And over over the years, I needed to get myself out of the pit of hell, which is uh, you, you know. And I was fortunate along the way. I had people who helped, mm -hmm. that meant it, that helped, and that uh, okay because it was years. It was not it was nothing overnight. It was it was uh, I was half in, half out. Even when I went into uh, ministry, I was half in and half out. I, I, I got to survive, you know. I, I did the dismiss thing, you know. <laughs> you know, the good thief, you know. I say, Jesus, why me? Why, why me? And uh, y y you know, in fact, I went back after I, I had my epiphany in '74. They didn't think I was going to live past '76, and then I went back. I went. Uh, I did a crime. Economic crimes in Arizona in the uh, in the eighties. What's an economic crime? Uh, like uh, stealing uh, hubcaps, uh, breaking in uh, uh, breaking into stores to take and reselling it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you have now in in prison is drug offenders. Mm -hmm. The vast majority, they're not they're not these they're not 
not like I am. They, they will get in a fix. They steal to get high. Mm -hmm. I didn't steal to get high. I stole to get the money. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't about getting high. Economics. Okay. Economics. Yeah. So, so uh, okay, I, I, I was a bad, I, well, I, I was a robber. I did, I, I did organized crime. Okay, I, I've done everything from uh, loan shocking to, uh, to robbery, okay? I'm robbery, okay? So, <laughs> so, I mean, the list is uh, as long as the building, but, uh, 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 you know, with a gang, uh, obviously, uh, you know, an Italian group, <laughs> but uh, out of Boston. But, but my stuff was, uh, and then I, my attempted change, after I had done my wall pole time, I got hooked up, I got, uh, caught up my kids number one and the second thing was I got people out I st we started the prison movement way back then in the 60s and the 70s so y y you know I was changing the prison system I got I got this you know I'm trying to get my associates out and stuff like that so that instituted my change you know and then and then Jesus got me and slapped me around and said, hey, you need to straighten out, you know, uh, but uh, it, 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 it is not an easy, it's not an easy thing. This is what they, they asked, somebody asked me to do, a, I had done a, a, a class uh, down at where you, uh, you, you know, where, where, you, where you teach with Dr. Eisenberg. And then somebody uh, from the federal system asked me, you know, they wanted, they learned I was about programming, that I developed halfway houses, that I, I did all this thing. And Eisenberg has been my friend for, I don't know, 50 years or whatever. And they were like, wait a minute. You know, and Eisenberg said, well, this is the guy I learned from. <laughs> I ain't you. So, so, so they called, they, they wanted me to do a program and they called me in to do a program for the federal system guys coming out. I said, well, what do you want me to do? They said, well, you need to talk to these guys. You know how to talk to them and everything else, and they're going to be getting out in several months. And they've done, most of them done eight years or better. Mm -hmm. I said, what the hell do you think I can do with them? I mean, skills? They got no skills. They got nothing. You've had them for eight years, and you think I'm in eight weeks? that I'm going to change it, You're sent, and where are they going to live? You're going to send them out, and they're going to go and do, uh, you know, live in a shelter, whatever, or somebody, say, and they got no job. And you're going to, you're going to force them then to get in a job when, you know, 5,000 uh, jobs just went out of the state of Connecticut. There are no jobs for these guys. These guys never work. They have no work history. So you're going to send them out, and the only thing they're going to do is they're going to get a gun, or something, mm -hmm. or they're going to break in the place, they're going to rob, and you're going to send it, and they're going to be back. I said, you can't do that. You've had them for eight years. Now, if I know that it takes four years for anybody who's on drugs or anything else like that to get to change. And the guy said, well, how do you know? I said, Delancey Street is the best program in the United States, Delancey Street in San Francisco. I said, my buddy's founded that program. I said, it is the best program outside of, uh, there's a mental health facility that's probably equally as good, but Delancey Street, and they know that you need to be tied to somebody for at least two years, and most likely it's four years before you're going to be able to be okay and you're going to be on your way. And all the statistics show them that. Five years, most people, 80% come back within five years. And I, I mean, I, 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 and so we know. It's not like we don't know. It's like, you know, it's like the homeless thing. You, you, you know, the same thing with the homeless uh, uh, program. We know. Give them a house. Give them a house. Give give them the damn house and don't worry about it. And and and, and yeah. plug everything else, and you, and you're gonna be all right. Do you, it's, do you? It's, it's that political will. It's it's yeah. It's, yeah. it's getting people past the point of them saying, well. Why should this person get this? Or, that's, it, and right. that's what it really is. That's, I mean, that's the bottom line. That's the, bottom line. That that's the, the way that people line. feel. Mm -hmm. is, the hits the wrong line. Yeah. Why should, yeah. Why, sh why should we be giving this person this, this advantage? 
Guy, you, you guys in the prison system say it all the time. How come he's going to college at BU? I can't afford to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I got to lock him in and his professor comes in here. However, mm -hmm. I got off on justice and that is not what I want. I want that, to I was grill interested. you. Yeah, well, go ahead, <laughs> but I thought it was interesting. You know, what are, right now, I'll segue, what are you doing right now? I'm teaching full time at University of New Haven, go Chargers. Oh, there you go. It's fun. It's really fun. It's exhausting. I'm working on a book on Frog Hollow, a neighborhood in Hartford. I'm freelancing for WNPR Housing and Homelessness, and I'm back to writing the column I used to write at The Current, but only t every two weeks, not on staff as a freelancer. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Fess up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, let me get this straight. I'm not saying I'm doing I'm, any of it I'm, well. I'm, I'm, I'm professor full-time yeah. at New Haven. Yeah. I'm a writer for The Current every two weeks. Every two weeks. Yeah. I'm uh, freelancing free for WNPR. NPR. Freelancing for NPR. Yeah, WNPR at every w month, and just every month. Yeah. Once a month. Once oh, a gee month. whiz, just like okay. <laughs> I know. And, 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 you're writing, and you're writing another a, book. A book, and I've taken just a month break, but I'll go back to writing for this great website, Connecticut Health Investigative Team. And the investigative team. You yeah. wrote for that before, right? For a long time. I just time? took a couple of months break because, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. There All was right, a, so pick one of those. Yeah, pick one of those. <laughs> like, why don't you just I want to know the it. book. Uh, the reason I want to know about the book, okay, yeah. I, I do want to know what you te you're, you're teaching. I, I would guess you're teaching journalism. Communication and Communication, journalism. yeah, yeah. I, I figured that. But the book, uh, okay, is on a poverty neighborhood, mm -hmm. okay, I know because I've done, uh, I did two speaking engagements up there with my associate from uh, Massachusetts, Bobby DeLello, mm -hmm. who's with the American Friends uh, Justice Program. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so Bobby and I did, uh, uh, well, he, actually, they were his because we were dealing with uh, solitary, confinement. solitary confinement, okay, and there was a serious community group there and we would we did the big thing in the storefront that was right around behind where the uh, that that is up where the state house is right, right near the capital right 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 just, near the just capital. west of it just yeah. west of it right so so my interest is what are you talking about the neighborhood you know <laughs> when I used to get mad at the current which was about every hour I'd take off walking and I'd head down through this neighborhood, and I always like the architecture. They have the old perfect sixes there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Just beautiful stuff. And it, I always had the sense that there was a lot that had happened there. And as it turns out, everything cool that's happened in the country happened, if not first in Frog Hollow, at least at some point. It had one of the best colonial newspapers, American Mercury, published there. It had a magic well during the colonial times. They couldn't explain why this water was so pure and abundant. Um, it was a huge center for manufacturing starting in the 1850s right. um, with uh, Sharps rifle, weed sewing machine, uh, Al Al Colonel Pope's everything, bicycle, car, all of it was right mm -hmm. there on Capitol. Um, it's just, and, and it was such an interesting place because the the subtitle is Searching for the American Dream because it, there's always been immigrants coming through and you know it starts with Irish then Italian then now it's Dominican mm -hmm. and it's it's just this vibrant interesting place and it is quite poor the the uh, per capita household uh, per capita household income is you know below 25,000 mm -hmm. a lot of single mothers there um, schools that are struggling but it's a vibrant neighborhood Park Street has always been um, a place for businesses from way back. It used to be, I think it was called Old Mill Lane, mm -hmm. had a flaxseed mill there. It's just, it's just a great place. It's, well, it's so interesting that, you, that you're doing that book. I mean, because when I went up there, when we went in there, it was, it was like, you know, you knew Some, poverty, uh, but yeah. there, was a, there was an energy yeah. that was There's dynamic, there. Uh, uh, okay, there. And, and the group that was out of there, and I'm not sure that Bobby doesn't still work with that group. The group that was out of it, well, uh, they, 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 they were doing all justice issues. They were part of the second chance 
group that we had, part of the coalition, they had done stuff on the death penalty mm. and stuff like that, and they were just a dynamite. Uh, I bet. Yeah, you know, and, and, and they filled this this uh, little uh, storefront that we that we were in, coffee shop kind of storefront. La Paloma Seven Era, is it that one? La Paloma Seven Era. It's now a bar, I think, but that was a coffee shop beyond all coffee shops owned by the Cotto family. It, that, that was it. Yeah, it's yeah. a great place. Oh, the, okay. the former it's owners. A bar? I'm told that I'm going up there You're to have go a drink. And see, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see if it is? I'll ask. Uh, Are you a bar? Because yeah. I'm here you to drink. Here yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or a restaurant, but it's it's, uh, it's beer. yeah whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it in the cup. I'll drink it. Okay. okay. But yeah, La Paloma, uh, great place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and uh, and, and uh, so that, that that that's great. You're writing writing about that. Okay, and. Uh, and uh, the school. Yeah, the school's great. I, no one ever told me teaching was so hard because I'd always been an adjunct professor for like 13, 14 years, and that's great. You swoop in, you teach a class, you go home, big deal. And I went down to um, interview. I, had a, I was on a two-year appointment at Central, and that was ending, and I needed to get a job. So I went down, I started collecting adjunct professorships, you know, which is, you're the workhorse. And I went down and interviewed there, and I interviewed with this really nice man and was interviewing for a job I had no business interviewing for, teaching theory of, I didn't even know what the word meant, but, you know, <laughs> I thought I could bluff my way in. I, I could not. So I finished with the interview, and I'm getting up, and he says, what would we have to do to get you to work here full time? And I sat down and said, ask me nicely. That's it, and I'll be here. And he did. I just happened to apply when they needed people. I don't have a PhD. I'm not doctor. I have a master's, but um, it's been great. It's exhausting. I am so tired. And all you do is grade. Like when you're not teaching or talking to students, you're grading something. Yeah, but see, <laughs> you're a professor and you haven't learned the trick. Don't so, assign things. Yeah, no. Nah, yeah, you, you should have your PhD. You get the kids to do all the work. I know. Yeah, that, you know there that is that's a, the trick, Yeah, right? I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's not because it's writing, and I don't feel like it's fair to hand it to an admin and say, okay, grade these, because I assigned it. You know, uh -huh. it's like you made the mess, you clean you, it you up. You clean it up. But uh -huh. it's, it's really cool. I have great hope. I've never looked at generations behind and gone, oh, God, the world's in a, you go into hell in a handbasket. These the kids... These students, they just give you hope. You know, they're as goofy and loopy as we were, but they're smarter than we were. Like, they're s just smarter. Oh, God. When I was at BU, I didn't think they were smart. You should get out and, more. Go and, down and, to UNH. And, well, well I, I actually, when I, when I, 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 do, I do usually one or two uh, classes a year for mm -hmm. Dr. Eisenberg down at down uh, school. Uh, okay. How and, do you find uh, parking? And, uh, <laughs> there is. Right, well, what I do is I park at a restaurant place where we go, and then I get in his car and uh, <laughs> and, and, and go up to the That's go up smart. to the school. Um, and, but uh, there was a couple of times I was asked. To, you know, to do that, to teach, and I said, no, I, you know, I, I did adult ed way back when, and I said, no, I, and I did the stuff when I was at Boston University at the School of Theology, and I said, I couldn't stand the kids. I, I mean, I, then you, you shouldn't know, teach. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good move. Somebody said, well, you had 11, Father, you should be, I said, well, uh. you know, it's a, it's a different thing. Uh, I, I said, when you think that graduate students are stupid and they can't even find the bathroom, when you give them assignments, well, all the kind of stuff you do with justice is, uh, and especially related to prisons, is you've got to find your own way. There's no cookie cutter mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, and, and, and when you're trying to instruct people on how, how you deal with prisoners, and the, which is what, what uh, you know, justice is my thing, is you're trying to say, you know, you're going to be dealing with this individual, but you can't trust the individual, but you've got to be trusting because that individual is going to be, you know, manipulating trying to, manipulate, and yeah. trying to get anything they can off you. And, and it was, it was a, probably it's difficult stuff to relate to, uh, mm. to individuals. And then, of course, community organizing, then that's a whole nother. Yeah, I'm you, not you, teaching you, that. You, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a different, it's a different thing, but, uh, 
I like you know, it. I do. You, you do. You, you like I really it. do. I, I never would have thought of I have. I'm from a family of teachers, so I heard all the mm -hmm. you know, bad stuff. Oh my God! Oh you my know. God, right? So why would you want to do that? And I really only aimed for journalism. So I pretty much was sure there were no other skills I could offer but journalism. I, this is all I've ever done. You know, briefly behind the counter McDonald's, my people's skills are lacking. My cousin had a firecracker stand. I worked there. I was good at that. Yeah. But he blew off a thumb, and that was disgusting. So I didn't, that, and it's seasonal. You know, you can't really do that all year. Besides, you only got so many thumbs. You can <laughs> Guess what I did? That's <laughs> nah, not nice. Right, right. Um, so my, and I'd worked at a library for two hateful, hateful women, and I just couldn't stand the, although I loved to read, I couldn't stand the idea of yelling at little kids for having books in late, which is not a librarian. That's yeah. not what they do, but these two were horrible. Well, they're dead now. They're in hell. So I had journalism. <laughs> that was it, you know. And I thought when I left the current, mad. Okay, now what? <laughs> you know, and I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a job. So I, I've, I've managed to fall pretty lightly. I've been lucky, really lucky. Well, that's you know, well, journalism to me is important. Writing is important. Obviously, that's why I publish stuff for yeah. guys in the joint to to get their voice out i think it's so so important and everything and uh, uh it, it, i think it happens to be one of the most important fields yeah you, know, you know that's why i call you an advocate i mean if if you don't get the voice out if nobody's hearing what's happening on especially on the issues i, I mean i mean you're not you, you know you're not chopped liver you're, you're, <laughs> thank you're, you you you're, you're dealing with you're dealing with hardcore stuff uh, uh, I know, I know, I know. You got a bunch of. I got, I, I got stuff on. Uh, uh, what do you got? You got the what to watch in healthcare. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. you, you, you did, you did, you did that. Uh, you, know, you, you know, all, all the stuff. You, you've got, you, you've got, you've got the blog, right? I do. Dating Jesus. <laughs> da dating Jesus. Okay, so you can. Yeah. Google it. You, you, got you the can book. Google it. I, I was told when the, before the book came out, you have to have a blog, and I'm thinking, oh, what? So I started it, and now it's become like this sick thing I can't stop doing. And so I post there. I'm also the mother of a blog at University of New Haven. I teach a se senior seminar, and we're looking at how to research and report and write and broadcast about poverty because I want to send these baby journalists out into the world where they are not frightened of this and they can do data visualization and they can figure out charts. How much, how, 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 how much technical skills do you need for that course? You can come in as ignorant as you want, but you'll leave smart. You'll leave with a true skepticism of everything you see and read about poverty. But you're learning, you're, you're learning how to publish it and put it into the airwaves. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, but well, we have a blog. We don't really have a good name. It's just wealth and income inequality. But that's on WordPress well, I gotta, as well. I got to look that up. Yeah, you do. I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Good. Where, where do you live? <laughs> where? Uh, yeah. What are you a skeptic? Well, he no, no. I'm, no I'm, he you know uses Facebook. He's he's on uh, he's unbelievable. Yeah. Facebook. Oh, okay. Uh, our. Uh, I, I, I have a good way of taking a look at facts and figures and having a good grasp of That's good. the fact that you can change anything to make it oh. look any way you want. Stats, stats and, and, damn and, stats and, 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 and lies. And it's all uh, about, you know, who's, who's breaking it down into what pattern and you can make anything look like anything. It's, you it's can so, if you're dishonest, but if you, numbers don't lie. It depends Interpretation on how Interpretation of numbers <laughs> yes. can lie. Yeah, no, that's true, and we do talk about that. And that's we've, that's we've, the same thing when you hear about, oh, we, we've ended veteran homelessness. You have to explain what that means. Yes. Yeah. And you it, have not. You're, and so you're talking about chronic. You're not talking about overall. And you're not talking yeah. about there is no more either, and you have to be very but clear about that. But that's the perception that people have. And when, that's why when, you when have you, to. When you say that. That's how you, yeah. you need to Which complain. is why right. I always followed yeah. up. Of course we don't mean that it's yeah. not Yeah, you have, to, you, you have to be out there and clean that up. Yep. And, and, and that's the key to all that stuff. I can't believe this. It did, did I just see four minutes? I, yes, I did. I, oh my God. Time goes like that. It goes like that. Okay. Yeah. We weren't bad with you tonight, huh? You was weren't. I, you were not. I, I, I wasn't worried. I, I, you were worried. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Uh, 
She's got more material to write about in dating Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got stuff I'm going to hook her, right? I got stuff she needs to write about. Next week, who do we have? We got my, my, my good friend uh, Tuna. Oh, yeah, okay. Scott, Scott Mitchell. He's Scott got Mitchell. He's got Golden's Boardwalk Marina. We're, we're, we're going to talk about Marina. Fishing We're going to talk and, about uh, fishing boats and yeah. totally change. Uh, people yeah. should be uh, happy with that, uh, okay? <laughs> and, and then... And, and then uh, After that, we got uh, Avery Gaddis. Who's, Avery Gaddis. Who's uh, the, the, the uh, urban policy guy for... Uh, urban policy. For, for, for the Republican Senate. Set, set. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then That'll we got... Hoping for, for, for Bruce Morris. Bruce, Bruce Morris, Morris is, is, is coming back, and uh, obviously we're talking about the, the black. We got Senator Obama. Osteen coming up. She's coming on too. Oh my goodness, uh, Senator uh, Fameka. Working on that one. I, I, I saw him last a, week. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we okay. So yeah, so we got a we got a we got a good lineup coming up. Okay. Uh, Bless you. Thank so you very good much. to get I you one. We're Pleasure gonna to get you Thank back. You, okay. I appreciate it. And uh, all you folks, uh, please, uh, you pray for me. I'll pray for you. I need all your prayers. You know that. So, okay. And uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>